All right. And so we go to verse two of Acts chapter 20. It says, when he had gone through those regions and had given them much encouragement, he came to Greece. There he spent three months. And when a plot was made against him by the Jews, as he was about to set sail for Syria, he decided to return through Macedonia. Sopter the Berean, son of Pyrrhus, accompanied him and of the Thessalonians, Aristarchus and Secundus and Gaius of Derby and Timothy and the Asians, Tychicus and Trophimus. These went on ahead and were waiting for us at Troas. But we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread. And in five days, we came to them at Troas, where we stayed for seven days. A lot of logistics there, kind of easy to get caught up in it. So yeah. we, we just glossed over something rather important as we go through all these logistics. Did somebody just try to kill Paul again? And when a plot was made against him by the Jews, yeah, isn't this interesting? I mean, let's talk about this for a minute. Uh, Luke really, really is short on words here. Like Noel said, you can almost kind of gloss over it. Like, oh yeah, there was a plot to kill him. And so he did something else. I like, whoa, 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 wait. So common at this point that it's just like this I'm minor right detail. Like people tried to kill Paul. And when a plot was made against him by the Jews. And, <laughs> wait, yeah, it happened. <laughs> Exactly. So, so what, you know, what we always want to know is like, oh, I want more information. And sometimes you can pick up more information from other books that Paul wrote later, where he refers to various things or he, he alludes more likely to them. So, so here's what we're kind of piecing together from just logic and geography and some of the ep epistles that he's going to write later. Most commentators, because of his location, feel like this was probably the group of Jews in Corinth that wanted to take him before Gaius, if you remember, sorry, Gallio, wrong guy, Gallio, <laughs> um, because they were they wanted to have him executed. So, so Gallio uh, says to them, look, if you had some major ordeal, like we would deal with this, but it's not major and I'm not dealing with it. So, so think there. And so he, um, he has them like, beaten up, whipped out of the, the location where they are. They are completely humiliated. And they're so angry that they, we think they beat up Sosthenes, who was the leader of the synagogue. Um, yeah. So we just said, we kind of did some discussion on that at the time. But anyway, all that review to say, most commentators believe it's probably that same group of men that decided, okay, we didn't get them the first time, but we're going to get them this time. We will let them get on the boat. And then we're going to, you know, throw them overboard or kill them and then throw them overboard or whatever their plan was. We're not totally sure. No, well, there's something really, really interesting yeah. biblically that's very easy to, again, gloss over and miss. What is that? Yeah. So, you know, under the assumption, and I think it's a very well supported assumption that these are the same people who tried to kill him in Corinth. When we go back to Acts chapter 18, you remember that we talked about a promise that God made to Paul. And in Acts chapter 18, verses nine through 11, it says, one night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Don't be afraid. Keep on speaking. Don't be silent for I am with you and no one is going to attack and harm you because I have many people in this city. And so Paul stayed in Corinth for a year and a half, teaching them the word of God. This is a promise that God made to him while he was in Corinth, which you remember we equated to like the Las Vegas of the ancient world. It was a really depraved, very scary place. God says, don't worry, Paul, I've got you taken care of while you're in this city. I've got many people here. You're safe from bodily harm while you're here. What I think is interesting about this, it was highly contextualized. You're safe here. I'm going to keep you safe in the city of Corinth. But when those same people from Corinth, come try to kill Paul again. God extends that same covering over Paul, even external on the ship. And I actually wonder if that's why Luke is so brief about this, because to him, it's almost self-evident. Like, yeah, the, the Corinthians came, uh, tried to kill him again. But as you all know, you know, God said that wasn't going to happen. So it didn't happen. And just as a note, when God makes a promise, he keeps the promise 100%. He fulfills it all the way. And so this is a neat example of that, that if you don't have some of that context and you don't know that these are very likely Corinthians that are doing this, um, you might miss it. And I think that's really neat um, and helpful to keep in mind. So